households or consumers buy different types of things. We can pay the rent or we buy food. We can pay for transportation and we have to pay our bills. We can even pay for services like getting our hair cut. Consumers buy a wide range of things every single day. Consumer spending is a large and relatively stable part of total spending. Consumer spending is shown by the capital letter C. The relationship between what we spend and our income is called the consumption function. Let's look at three important characteristics of the consumption function that you have to know by looking at Juan. 1. Consumption is positive even if income is zero. If Juan loses his job and has no income, he's still going to consume goods because he has to eat and he has to live somewhere. He will borrow money or use some of his saving. This we call autonomous spending and we use this symbol to represent it. 2. Consumption is going to increase if income increases. If Juan gets a job, he's going to start spending more. We call this induced consumption. 3. When income increases, consumption increases, but by less than the increase in income. For example, if his income increases by 100 rand, his consumption will increase by less than 100 like 90 rand, because he will also save 10 rand. The percentage of income that we spend is called our marginal propensity to consume. And therefore, induced consumption is a certain percentage shown by small c times the income that we get. Therefore, your total consumption is equal to your autonomous consumption plus your induced consumption and this we call the consumption function. Let's use a graph to illustrate the consumption function. On the vertical axis we write the total consumption spending and the horizontal axis we write total income or production. Do you remember the first characteristic you had to know about the consumption function? It was if income is zero, if Juan has no job, no income, the consumption will not be zero. Juan will borrow money or he will use some of his savings, but he will still get money in order to consume vital goods and services. Therefore, the first point on our graph is here. This is Juan's autonomous consumption. That is the amount Juan will spend if he had no income. Autonomous consumption is that part of your consumption spending that is not influenced by your income. No matter what your level of income, the autonomous consumption stays the same. This is Juan's autonomous consumption. What is the second characteristic you had to know? If income increases, total consumption will also increase. This is Juan's induced consumption. That part of consumption which increases when your income increases. What's the third characteristic you have to know? If income increases, Total consumption will increase by less than the increase in income. This means this green line is relatively flat. For every one rand in increase in income, consumption will also increase, but by less than one rand. For example, 80 cents. So if we had an income of, let's say, uh, Y1, Then this part over here would be my autonomous consumption and this part over here will be my induced consumption. Now let's say my income increases to Y2. Do you see that your autonomous consumption is still the same amount? Because autonomous consumption does not depend on your level of income. However, at an income level of Y2, my induced consumption increased dramatically because induced consumption is dependent on your level of income. If I'm rich, I spend more than when I'm poor. So when the income in the economy increases to, let's say, Y1, then consumption increases from autonomous consumption to C1. This change 
in consumption is much smaller than the initial change in income. It's because Juan will also save some of his money. The relationship between the increase or the change in consumption and the change in income is called the marginal propensity to consume. So the marginal propensity to consume times income gives us our induced consumption. Do you remember the consumption function? It said consumption is equal to autonomous consumption plus induced consumption. In the consumption function, marginal propensity to consume is indicated by the small letter C. The MPC is smaller than 1. For example, we can say it's 0, 0,9. This means that for every 1 rand increase in income, consumption will also increase, but by less. In this case, by 0, 0,9. Induced consumption is therefore equal to small c times y, meaning equal to the marginal propensity to consume times income. Note the following. This green line shows the consumption function graphically. It does not start from the origin. Remember that's due to the first characteristic. This part is autonomous spending. This part is induced spending. And the last characteristic said the green line should be relatively flat because consumption will increase by less than what income increases by. Remember the consumption function is C equals to autonomous consumption plus induced consumption. Take note, all types of spending in this study unit and the next will be divided into two groups, autonomous spending and induced spending. Autonomous spending are not affected by income in any way. And it determines the intercept of the expenditure line, meaning where on this line your expenditure line would intercept or cut through. Induced spending is, in, is directly influenced by your income and determines the slope of your expenditure line, meaning how flat this line would be.